How you doing everyone? It's Kevin. I'm back with another video. We're going to be working on a go-kart today. Uh, we got to get the key switch mounted in the front. It's mounted on the front of the uh, 420 Predator engine right now. We got to get it from there all the way up in here to the front. So we don't want to reach back there and get a turn the key on. We want to be able to reach right here when we're sitting in a seat. And then we need to move our gas tank. We got to get our gas tank put on there somewhere too. So we got a little bit of figuring out to do, but uh, I'm sure we'll figure it out. We'll get her done. So let's get started. Before we get started on this video, I wanted to show you guys something. I had a comment that uh, somebody made about me hooking up the battery terminals. They said if I hooked them battery terminals up in the front and then went to the back, wouldn't they spark if I touched them together? And they're absolutely right. But I want to show you guys something. I made a mistake on that video and I want to kind of clear it up to make sure you don't hook up that battery wrong. So let me show you. Okay, the first thing you want to do when you're hooking up these battery terminals is you want to hook the two on your motor up first. Uh, you hook both of your hot ones up here first. Now, uh, you've seen I had some pretty good size copper um, uh, fittings on these uh, connectors. Uh, that was the only ones that I could find that would fit on these battery terminals and fit on my uh, bolts here. So I used these little bigger ones. Now before it's all said and done, I will not, those won't be, I'm going to cover them with shrink wrap. So they won't touch anything. They have less chances, less uh, uh, copper sticking out there, less chances you've got to hit anything with it and sparking on it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw some shrink wrap on these and uh, shrink wrap them down so there's not much of that showing. So you want to hook up the two on your motor first. And then you want to go up to the front where the battery is. I'll swing you guys up here to where the battery is. And anytime you're hooking up your battery terminals, say in the front here, what you want to do is you want to hook your hot one on first. You hook the hot one on first and then you hook the negative on. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and the reason why is because if you hook your uh, negative up first and then hook your positive up, when you're turning your wrench, if you happen to hit the bars or anything on the go-kart, it's going to spark uh, and probably scare the crap out of you. So what you want to do is hook your positive terminal on first and then go over and hook your negative terminal on. And when you hook up your negative terminal, if your wrench accidentally hits the go-kart anywhere, it's not going to spark on the negative. So I just wanted to clear that up to make sure uh, somebody wasn't doing that wrong. Uh, don't forget, hook the motor up first and then hook up your battery in the front second Make sure you hook the hot one on first, and then hook your ground one on. Okay, what a simple fix. One small piece of angle iron. I'm hoping this holds up. It should. What I did is I cut the top in a little U shape to fit under this pipe. I drilled two holes. I put a little piece of pipe in here, square tubing. Uh, for a spacer on this and then just a block uh, just cut a hole in here Now I'll have to cut that nut or that bolt off right there So it uh, you know don't interfere in my little wiring. I'm going to put in there But I can move this I can put this right in here anywhere and I'll have a key switch on the dash and two switches now I have enough room down here to put another switch if I choose but I'm not going to drill that hole unless I have to. So we're going to go ahead and get this thing welded into place. And uh, hopefully, I think this will work out just fine. Now, what I did is I measured from here to the floor. And I think I'm right around 14 inches. And my boot is about 12 inches. Uh, so I have more than enough room for my foot to go past that. Now, eventually... I'll probably cut this little piece here sticking off. I'll cut it off. But we'll wait until the warranty's out on the motor and then we'll cut that off right there. Just in case we have to take it back. But this is where we're going to weld it on. So we'll have our switches, our wiring, and our uh, key switch in the front. 
simple piece of angle iron. Well, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and take everything back off of this guy. That way we don't mess anything up. Alright, we got it all cleaned up. We got some primer on it. Uh, I welded it around the top and then I went underneath and welded it from underneath. And it's very, very strong on there. Uh, I don't think we're going to have any problem with it breaking off or shaking enough to break or anything. So I think we're in good shape for this piece up here. Now, uh, the way I'm, I'm trying to get things done so I could get it painted, that's the reason why we're welding this stuff on now. Now there's no use in us wiring that back up. We know that the box is going to fit on there and the switches fit in the holes. So we're good there. All we got to do is start working on the gas tank now. Okay, this is the piece that I'm working on to actually hold the gas tank up. Um, this is going to set on them two ridges. Now I'm going to go ahead and tack this together and I'll show you guys uh, what I mean where it sets on the go-kart and how it's going to work. So what we're going to do now is just go ahead and get it welded up. We'll get it tacked. We're just going to put some tacks on it so it'll hold it into place. Make sure it's going to work before we actually completely weld it up. Okay, we got four little tacks on there. We'll try it on the cart and make sure it works first. Well, this is where it's going to sit, right up on top of this lip right here. And slide, hopefully, right down in there. And then we'll be able to bolt this on because don't forget, we have to be able to take the motor in and out of here. If we not able to take the motor, if we weld this into place, we're not going to be able to get that motor out of there. So we're going to just use this, and we're going to drill a couple holes in there, and we'll bolt this down. And now we'll be able to put our gas tank anywhere we want on top of this.
Okay, there's our gas tank. Now, I'm not sure if I want to drill the holes through this guy yet on these two ends because I need to know exactly where I need the tank. We'll put the seat in there and we'll move this back and forth, but we will clean these up. I didn't clean them up because I thought we was going to take these two uh, ears off the ends. I thought we was going to take them off, but uh, I guess not. So we got all of our brackets on there. The gas tank's nice and level with the cart right now. Uh, I think it turned out pretty good. And like I said, I'll be able to move it up if I need it up. I'm not sure if it'll hit the seat though. Or I could move it back. So I still have room to work with it. Uh, but I don't think it looks too bad at all. Let me give you a bigger view here. I don't think it looks too bad on there. Don't look bad at all really. Alright, I got it all uh, cleaned up and primer. Just got a little bit of primer on it. And I think it looks pretty good. Now, we won't drill the holes in here, like I said, until we get the motor mounted. Everything's done and we'll move it back and forth wherever so it clears the seat and the motor. And uh, then we'll give a couple holes drilled in there. That way we can remove this to put the motor in and out. Uh, actually, the only other way you'd be able to do that is to take this stuff off the top, take the shocks off, drop the swing arm, and take the motor out. I don't want to have to do that. So we got our gas tank holder on there and it's removable. So that's pretty cool. Okay, uh, now I thought about taking two more pieces of this pipe. Being that I got this set up on here, I was going to come from here, back just a little bit, and then down to this piece here. Uh, uh, but I don't think I need more than about three, four inches up here, and then bring it down at an angle. And that's going to help support this beam right here. And uh, I think it would look better too. So we still have some more of that uh, pipe, the same pipe left. So we're going to get out the, the uh, pipe bender and we're going to try and see what we can do with a piece of pipe through there. That's going to be a tough one because i got to get this angle and I'm not really that sure on how to do it. I'll probably just eyeball it and get them both as exact as I can. Okay, um, as you can see, my pipe bender's leaning like that, and I got this big, long piece of pipe. And the reason why I did that is because I don't... I, I need about 32 inches of this stock, okay? Um, but it's, it's not easy uh, when you're bending these pipes to get these things exactly the same, the right size. So what I'm doing here is I'm leaving it hang over a little bit, and I know from here down to this bend probably is not going to be long enough because I only need just like four inches and it has to stick through the from here to that wheel is pretty far so you want to make sure that you, you stay on the wheel when you're bending it so I'm going to go ahead and make this first bend and then I'm going to cut it off uh, just to make sure everything I have enough steel I don't want to be short I'd rather waste a little bit of steel than waste the whole 32 inches that I need so that's why the pipe bender looks like it does right there and we're gonna go ahead and get these bends done and I'm just eyeballing this I don't have any way of telling exactly how uh, I want it bent oh uh, I'm gonna eyeball it. I'm gonna bend it a little bit eyeball it and bend it and just keep doing that until I get it where I want it And then I'll bend the second one the same way Like I said when you guys are bending your pipe make sure that you have the pins and the right holes
I almost bent this pipe wrong. I had the small die in there thinking that I was working on the go-kart last, but we had built that um, lifetime table, that light bar, and it was made out of half-inch tubing, and I had the half-inch die in here, and I had the pins on the smallest holes, or the closest holes, and we didn't need that. We needed the three-quarter inch, needed bigger, move the pins out one, and use the bigger die. Good thing I didn't do that because I probably would have messed that piece of metal up. And bending this stuff, just take your time because what happens is if you go too fast, it'll want to kink your pipe. So we're just going to take our time and uh, get us a bend in here. And basically, guys, I'm just doing this by eye. I'm not doing it. Uh, I don't have any exact measurements to do it. I'm just doing it. And like I said, this pipe bender works really good on, um, it works good on, um, you know, thick, heavy metal. And uh, somebody, Gator in there, said if you want to do thinner ma metal, uh, if you filled it full of sand. I'm not sure how that would be done, but I'm sure if you filled it up with something, it would keep it from crushing. So, that's a good one there, Gator. I appreciate it. Uh, but if you guys are just getting into bending these pipe and you're wanting to use one of these pipe benders, uh, I would say just take your time and practice on some steel. Uh, that's the best way to do it. Just practice a little bit on some old steel, not your good steel. Of course, I was practicing on good steel and wasting a bunch of it, but it's all I had right there. So... Uh, like I said, give it some time to stretch that steel. If you keep just keep pressing on it, it's going to kink it. Uh, I'm not sure. This is the only pipe bender I've ever used, so I don't know much about pipe benders. I just know that this is the only one I've ever used, and it works pretty good. Sometimes I'll even take a torch and heat that pipe up just a little bit, just to get it to stretch a little bit more but it seems to be doing pretty good here so we're gonna get these we're gonna get this one bent up and get it cut off and then uh, we'll get you guys back in here we'll get us another one made we'll line this one up make sure everything works on it all right I wanted to show you guys something here uh, we got these two bent but if you notice this bend here you see that bend that's not a nice looking bend. It, it kind of wanted to smash the pipe right there. But this bend is a lot better looking. And I'll tell you why. When I first started the video, I put this in there cold. And I started bending it uh, cold. And then after I turned the video off, I heated it up just with a propane torch. Uh, heated it up and it got a little, bend, a little better bend on it as I was uh, bending it. So the second one, I heated this pipe up, is pretty hot. I left it on there quite a few minutes heating it up and it made a better bend. So if you see your metal smashing like that, if you put a little bit of heat on it, it may help you out. We're going to go ahead and use these two pipes. It's just a go-kart. I think it'll be fine. But uh, I just wanted to let you guys know that if you throw a little bit of heat on there, it's really cold in my garage this morning, so this pipe's cold. Heating it up helps it bend a little bit. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get my top on about where I want it. And then I'm going to cut it first. We're going to cut it. We're going to cut it off first. And we're going to be getting our um, Harbor Freight hole saw bits. And that's what I'll use to cut that. And I just want the edge of that bit to fit right on that little line right there. And then we'll mark our other one down at the bottom. And we'll do the same with it. But I'm only going to do one at a time. Now we're just going to mark the bottom of it the same way we did the top 
and then we'll lay this down on the other pipe well maybe not we'll have to do them both separate just in case they're different size you know in case this is back more or something screwed up somewhere so we'll get this and mark and get it cut off the next one the one on the bottom okay this one's a little bit tricky here you can see the way I have it set up in the machine um, the pipe is in an angle going up because of the pipe on the cart so we're gonna try this cut I haven't done one this uh, tight of an angle but yeah we'll give it a try and see what happens See, that didn't work very well, did it? Oh. Okay, I couldn't get the that to set in the drill press right the way I wanted it, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it with a 4-inch grinder. I've done these before, and this is the way I'm going to do it. So... What we do is get our angle in there and then we'll grind that out a little bit to make it fit down on the pipe better. Okay. That's not too bad actually. It looks pretty good on there. So this way, if this beam here gets hit, hopefully it's got more support back here. Which should work out pretty good. I'm just going to take this into the grinder. And grind it off just a little bit of a u-shape so it sets in there just a little better actually it don't really look that bad the way it's setting it's actually pretty good surprise let me show you guys see it's not that awful bad where you have to weld right there See, I like that one there because it goes right around it pretty neat there. But we'll, uh, I'll grind just a little bit of that and straighten it up. I think it looks pretty good. And get the other one done. Okay, what do you guys think? You think that's going to work out? I, I really think it looks good. It gives that more support back here. And it kind of makes it more look like the doom buggy look. Means that we took the two rods and pushed them in on the top so it's easier for us to get in and out of. Putting these back here should give that more support. So now all we got to do is clean it up where we're going to weld them on, get the pipes cleaned up, and get them put into place. All right, in this video, we got the uh, gas tank on. We got the bracket made for the gas tank. And we got the back part of the roll bar built. And we got the key switch done, or the bracket for the key switch. If I do say so, it looks pretty daggone good. Not too bad. Oh, now the gas tank, we'll drill them holes later. Once we get the seat mounted on there, it's not going to make too much of a mess. But I think the bars turned out really nice on the back. I think the roll bar being like that turned out really nice. Yep, I like the gas tank too. Uh, I know somebody said something about maybe a fuel pump, but I think I'll be okay there because it's still... Uh, gravity fed you know so it should work out pretty good well it's looking good it's getting there we got the back roll bars on the tank the key 
Everything that we needed welded on this cart, I think, is all finished. So now we're going to get on to the paint. Um, in the next video, we should have this thing painted and ready to start putting back together. We may even have it put together. I don't know. But we'll do our best to get as much as we can on the video. Um, I'd like to tell Go Power Sports thanks for all the parts they sent me. I'll be leaving a link in the description down below for GoPowerSports.com. You guys go check out their parts. They got some good car quality parts, and they got good go karts and mini bikes. Go check them out. So I'd like to tell everybody thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe, leave me thumbs up, thumbs down, or comment if you'd like. Until next time.